Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Eternal Palace, which is a new dice placement game where we'll be gathering resources, racing up tracks, but most importantly, building beautiful paintings made out of cardboard. It's true! While you do get points from other things as well, the main thing you'll be focusing on is building your beautiful layered Bob Rossian painting, and as well as seeing your score grow, you get to see your lovely landscape take shape. This is on Kickstarter right now, I'll put a link to the campaign page in the description and up in the corner of the screen so you can check out all of the final stuff. This is all prototype materials, but it should give you a good idea of what the final game will look like. Each round players will roll their dice, I've got everything set up for a two player game by the way as you might imagine, everybody rolls their dice and then compares results. So we've got a 5 and a 7 there. Then we adjust turn order. The person who rolled the lowest is going to go first and then in order up to the highest. So here green would go first and then come the player shields because now in secret we get to use these results to make groups of dice and you can use any effects that you might have gathered because we're going to place groups of dice out into these locations. The location you'll go to corresponds to the total pips of the group that you're sending. So if I was planning on going to the fish market for example, I'm going to want to use this one. We do have, so maybe early on in the game, when you haven't got many dice, just two in a two player game, you probably want to split them up so you can go to as many places as possible. But later on when you've got more dice, and especially when the competition is kind of focused on particular locations that have still got their bonuses left, you're of course going to want to combine those dice to reach the higher numbers. So once we've planned, we get rid of our screens, and we can spend wisdom, this resource here. Each wisdom can adjust a die up or down by one pip. And then two wisdom can be spent to kind of wrap a number around, so you can turn a one into a six or a six into a one if you needed to. So maybe with this four, I really want to go to the Forest of Abundance, one of the places where you can get resources. We have the Forest of Abundance for wood, the Stone Quarry for, you guessed it, stone, the Cowlin Mine for Cowlin, and finally the Bronze Forge for the bronze. For the resource spaces, depending on the number of dice in your group, you'll get a certain amount of resources. So for the forest here, if you just sent one die, you get one wood. If you sent two or more dice though, you get three wood. So for just spending one dice, I would get a wood and I would advance up the track here. Now what we are aiming for, as well as getting these resources to spend on cards and building the various monuments, is to reach the top of these tracks in the locations that have the tracks, so that we can gain layers of our paintings. So over the course of the game, if I repeatedly went to location 4 and I got to the top, I would find myself layer 4 and add it to my painting. If you're the first person to the top of the track, you'll also get to choose a feature which you can also add to your painting later on. Layers features and imperial seals that we'll come to later are all worth a point each. Now if any player wanted to go to a location that's already got dice in it, they have to pay a fish for every colour of dice that's already there, including their own. But it is important to try and keep up on these tracks because the features can be the difference between winning and losing. So we've seen the resource spaces, the monument locations with these lovely 3D models here. There are also, you know, cardboard tokens if you want to use these instead, and these are prototype pieces but they do look quite lovely out here. Anyway, the monument locations all want different resources. So the Spring Pavilion needs wood to build, the Serenity Bridge needs stone to build, the Dragon Kiln needs Kowlin to build it, and the Noble Ox needs bronze. Now at the start of the game, each of these locations has one resource in it to show you the cost. So to come to the Spring Pavilion, you just need to pay one wood to contribute to it. You get the painting layer straight away. There's no track to race up to. So it can be an easy way of grabbing those layers. And you also get the Spring Pavilion itself. Now when another player goes here later, and if they went in the same round like this, they'd need to pay a fish, they would need to pay two wood because yours would get left behind here. And every time a player pays to contribute to one of these monuments, they leave one of the resource they paid behind to show the increasing cost of it. They would get a painting layer too, but they also get to take the Spring Pavilion over to their player area, the monuments are worth points each as well. It's the same system for the Serenity Bridge, the Dragon Kiln and the Noble Ox as well, just with the different resources. Whenever you build any monument as well, you move one space forward on the palace track. If you built the monument and you already had it, you get to move an extra space along. And this is going to help you throughout the game gain dice faster, we'll talk about that in a minute. And at the end of the game, the player furthest along the palace track will get three Imperial Seals, which is points, and second place just gets one Imperial Seal. You can come to the Academy of Wisdom down here, where you can recruit new advisors. Again, there's a track to race up for the painting piece, and the first person there gets a feature as well. 
but you can look at the advisors that are on display here and take one into your player area. There are loads of different kinds of advisors. There are instant ones that can reward you with resources. This one here would move you up the palace track. Advisors that reward you with resources every time you go to particular locations. So this one would give you a stone every time you went to any of the resource locations, as well as what you'd normally get. There are advisors where you have to give other players something. So in this case, you give another player any resource and you will get back a different resource and a wisdom from the supply. So the other player gets something, but you get usually more things and things that you need more. You can pay for the advisors with the resource that's on the top left of the card. Doing that will earn you two wisdom, or you can pay no resources for the advisor and pay two wisdom instead. The display for the academy doesn't reset until the end of the round. You can come to the fish market, which is another way of getting advisors, but you draw three from the deck, so you don't quite know what you're going to be recruiting until you look at them. And this here tells us that we're going to take one into our player area, one goes back on the top of the deck, and one goes into the discard pile. Oh, and here we've drawn three of another kind of advisor, conversion. So for example, you could pay a wisdom to get two fish. Paying for the advisors at the fish market works in a similar way to the Academy of Wisdom, but you've guessed it rather than gaining wisdom, you can gain some fish. So you can either pay the resource that's on the advisor and gain three fish for doing that, or ignore the resources printed on the cards and just pay three fish instead. Moving up at the Temple of Wisdom, you can place a marker here depending on the combination of dice that got you here. So there's three different combinations with two dice that can get you a seven. So if I'd gone here with my trusty four and three, I would get to place a marker on that space and you just gain three honor. If you can come here in the future though with a different combination, say a five and a two, you get to place a second disc and filling two discs gets you painting layer seven. The first person to do it also gets a feature. If you've got a mammoth group of 12, you can go up to the palace market. Depending on how many dice got you here, you can put a disc up here. So whether it's two, three, or four or more, two discs here gets you the painting layer and the first person to do it again gets a feature. But you also get a mixture of rewards. So if you came here with two dice, you get to choose any three rewards out of three fish, two wisdom, a wood, a stone, a cowlin, or a bronze. If you couldn't get the right group, there are more uses of your dice. You can come to the Eternal Bridge, where you just place a single die, and depending on the number in it, you go up that many spaces. So if yellow's placed a four here, you can go up one, two, three, four spaces, and everything that you pass or land on, you get. So a fish and a wisdom in this case, all the way up to resources of your choice, an advisor, and right at the top there, the 13th painting layer for the Eternal Bridge, and again, if you're the first person to do that, a feature. There are also the Imperial Scrolls here at the top. If you used one or more dice, you get two fish or a wisdom. If you used two or more dice, you can also get yourself a resource. At the end of the round, you get your dice back. You turn over any advisors that you used that round to be used again next round. We get new advisors at the Academy, but most importantly, we get new dice. Whoever has the fewest dice gets a new one. If there's a tie, like there would be at the end of the first round of the game, it's whoever's furthest along the palace track. So there's an incentive to be furthest along there to get your extra dice first, but it is fair that you can't just keep getting new dice until everyone's caught up to you. The end of the game is triggered when a player has collected enough painting pieces, which is different based on the player counts. In a two-player game, you'll need nine out of the 13 layers. Whoever triggers the end of the game gets the painting completion token, which is worth a point. And then we look through our paintings and whoever got the most consecutively numbered layers also gets a point. Whoever gets the most points wins. So what do I think of Eternal Palace after playing the prototype? I absolutely love Eternal Palace. You can see for yourselves. It's absolutely gorgeous. I can only imagine what it's going to look like in its final form with the final versions of these minis. But aside from any minis or anything like that, I can't emphasize enough how much I love this painting system of the game, which you know, essentially each of these layers is just a point token, right? But the way that it comes together, you know, you're encouraged to get the uh, consecutive numbers and stuff for a bonus point at the end, but it really makes your landscape take a particular theme as well. Like if you've got all of these low numbers, you fill in all of the little mountain pieces and it plays into as well, you know, board gamers loving tactile things. It could just be gathering points, but we're building something beautiful and we get to do it as well. 
in our individual frames we're building up these beautiful paintings i know it doesn't really go along with the theme but i keep thinking it's like a proper kind of medium euro uh, bob ross game which i'm sure like me you've all been crying out for right if not why not yeah, let's stop going on about that painting for a bit. Uh, so yeah, it takes the dice grouping that we've really enjoyed in games like Kingsburg, and it mixes things up very nicely between the racing for tracks in a lot of the locations, kind of whoever built the last part of the monuments gets the extra points because they're left with the pieces, but also you're racing up the palace track, which is going to be useful for Imperial Seals at the end of the game, but also getting your dice first, although that's nice as well that in a two-player game anyway, the first person along the palace track gets their first shot at the extra dice, gets the first round with it, but then the other player gets to catch up next round. That being so important, the number of dice that you can have, it's really great having that uh, catch up in there as well. But there's always something to do with them, even if you know, you've know you got the layers, you don't need any of these resources, but you keep rolling all of these low numbers, you can use your wisdom to change the numbers around. You can go to the Imperial Scrolls if you really need to, you can go to the Eternal Bridge, and there's a, there's a painting piece waiting at the end of you there as well as all of the other bonuses from it. And there's always, you know, a, a need to be first as well as racing up the tracks. The cost of going to these actions is going to increase more and more, especially at higher player counts. If you are the last of four players to try and go to a location in a round, it's going to be a lot of fish. You've got the different combinations of advisors and all of their powers, shaking up the kinds of abilities and bonuses available to you each game as well. You know, just from a cardboard prototype, I have thoroughly enjoyed playing Eternal Palace. It's been a joy every time, just from, you know, a cardboard prototype with cut up painting pieces and stuff i don't mean to denigrate your cutting abilities alley cat it was a beautifully cut up prototype but you know what i mean i can't wait to see what the final produced version of this is going to look like if you're in agreement and you'd like to make this happen again the campaign page is linked in the description and you can go and see all of the final stuff and how you can get your hands on eternal palace if you should wish to do so all on that page i can't link it in the corner again youtube won't let me sorry about that I hope you enjoyed this video and that it's given you some idea of what Eternal Palace is like and whether or not you'd be interested in it. There are hundreds of playthroughs on this channel if you'd like to see me actually playing through a game. And if you would like to help me keep making these videos, I do have a Patreon linked in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching this though, and hopefully I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.